Hi guys, Mr. Hill here, back in my laboratory for another exciting lesson all about sound. So today we're going to be looking at frequency and pitch. So the frequency of a sound is how long the sound wave is. So it's the distance between the peaks and the troughs. So if we look at a high frequency wave on the top of this one, the period, so the gap between two troughs at the bottom of the wave is quite small. The low frequency wave, that period gets much longer. So as we said, the wave here is quite short. It doesn't last a long period of time. So this sound has a high frequency, it's a higher sound. So if you think of a piano, the further up the keyboard to the right hand side you go, the higher the notes get. This is a wave that's quite long, so this is going to give us a low sound. So this sound has a low frequency. The pitch of a sound is how we hear it. So do we hear a high note or do we hear a low note? So a sound with a high frequency will also have a high pitch. And a sound with a low frequency will have a low pitch. Now, I've got six sound waves on the screen for you now. Can you describe the sound that they're making? So remember from last time that the taller the wave, so the further away from the middle line they go, the louder that sound is going to be. So I've got the descriptions here, a low pitched loud sound, a high pitched quiet sound, just general noise, a low pitched quiet sound, a middle pitch pleasant sound, and a high pitch loud sound. So what I want you to do, pause the video here and see whether you can match the diagrams of the sound wave with their description. Pause here and complete this. How did we get on? Let's have a run through the answers. We'll have a good look at the shape, the shape of the waves we've got as well. So our first wave, the low pitched loud sound is our middle one here. We know it's a loud sound because the sound waves are big and tall. And we know it's a low pitched sound because the period of that wave is much bigger than any of the others. Our next one, the high pitched quiet sounds. So we know it's a quiet sound because the height or the amplitude of that wave is really small. It doesn't go a long way away from the middle sound of silence. We know it's high pitched because those sound waves are bunched close together. The period between the waves is much, much shorter. Now, noise. This is difficult to describe because it's just general noise. It's lots of sounds all jumbled up together. The volumes are all over the place. The frequencies all over the place. The um, pitch and the sound is just, it's noise. So this is our bottom one here. So the waves here are not smooth. They're not uniform. They don't follow a steady pattern. It's just a jumble. So this is what noise looks like when it's measured on an oscilloscope. So next we've got a middle pitch, a pleasant sound, something that's not too loud, not too quiet. Actually, no, I've got one ahead of myself. We've got the low pitched quiet sound to find first. So let's have a look, which one did we think it was? If you said the second one, you're quite right. It's a quiet sound, so the amplitude of those waves isn't very big, and there's a long period between the two waves. Now we come to our middle pitch, our pleasant sound, something that's nice to listen to. It's this one here. So it's not too loud, it's not too quiet, it's not too squeaky, and it's not too low. It's just somewhere in the middle. And our final one, the high pitch loud sound, can only be the third one down from the top. We also know that it's high pitch because the waves are close together, so the period is shorter and the amplitude is greater. It's further away from that middle line on the oscilloscope. So well done if you got all of those right. So most sounds are not pure. They're a mixture of frequencies. The wave on the left is a pure note, so the wave is smooth. The wave on the right is more jagged. 
showing all the different frequencies within a sound. So a tuning fork is designed to create a pure sound, allowing you to hear a single note. These are really useful when you're tuning musical instruments like pianos, for example. They give you an exact note that you can then tune everything else away from. So the idea with a tuning fork is you tap it gently on a surface and it starts ringing and it gives you a perfect smooth way. Musical instruments don't produce pure sounds. As you play them, a mixture of frequencies are produced. That's part of what makes them sound so nice to listen to. So your task today, you're going to have a go at creating your own bottle orchestra. So to do that, you're going to need to find a small bottle. The more you can find, the better, the better it will be. It can be plastic or glass. You're going to fill each one with a different amount of water. Now, for clarity on the image, we filled them with different coloured water so you can see how much water is in there. You don't need to do that for this. We just want to see different amounts of water. And then you can blow across the top of the bottle. And if you get it right, you'll get a lovely resonating sound. And what you can do is you can go up and down the bottles making different sounds. You can also, if you've got glass bottles and you're using a wooden spoon, you can run them up and down a bit like a xylophone and you'd be able to just gently tap out a tune as well. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to change the amount of water the frequency of the note will change. So if you've only got one bottle, what I want you to do is give it a blow or a tap when it's got no water in it, put a little bit of water in it and listen to the note and see what happens. And then put some more water in it and see what happens again. And make notes, see what happens to the frequency of the note. Does it get higher? Does it get lower? Does it do it any differently if I start off with the bottle full? and then empty it out bit by bit and check it again. Do I get a repeated result that backs up what I first saw the first time around? When has it got the highest pitch? When there's more water in there or when there's less water in there? And if you've got enough bottles, are you able to play a tune? Now, if you can, much like we did with our drums, put them up on tapestry and we'll have a go and see if we can name that tune. So that's the end of our lesson. Good luck. I look forward to seeing your work on Tapestry. Stay safe and we'll see you back in class really soon.